we've ever sung. We hope you feel the same excitement in it, because when I throw my hand up, we want you to all scream out the word, shout! And uh, sort to of get with the feeling for the song right through it. Johnny and Donna, you've just completed yet another fabulous comeback at St George's Leagues Club. How did that come to happen? Well, we were asked to do a, a show of nostalgia, which is so big at the moment, and uh, we got together Dinah and Jade Hurley and uh, Barry Stanton and Tony Brady and Carolyn Young and quite a lot of people, Lonnie Lee, uh, quite a lot of people that had been big in the uh, late 50s, early 60s, and the show ran for two weeks, and it was a, it was a fantastic uh, operation. What was the feeling suddenly working again with all these people you probably haven't seen for years? It was very good. Uh, the nostalgia that went on backstage actually was, uh, was just as good as uh, what went on on stage. Uh, we had uh, everybody uh, gathered around a microphone backstage singing the vocal backgrounds and everything. Shooby doo bop, shooby doo bop. <laughs> what sort of things did you remember? I suppose you did a lot of reminiscing. What, on the, uh, the singing part backstage. of it? Backstage. Backstage? Oh, well, we just, you know, we sort of helped everybody out and did all the vocal backing and, like, they all the old songs. They said to me, you put on a bit of weight, and they said to Johnny Devlin, you put on a bit of weight. I could, didn't even recognise Johnny Devlin. <laughs> what oh, about my the, goodness. The, there's probably people on that show who, who, what have they been doing for all these years? I think they've been working in the business, more or less. Uh, Johnny is uh, working in a... Uh, a department store. Uh, he's in charge of the paint department over there. And uh, Johnny Devlin. Yes, but he still works uh, a as an act uh, and does his shows. Uh, but I think he sort of does the day job to sort of help implement his uh, uh, income. Are you going to do anything else with the uh, the good old days of rock revival show? We are in 1975, uh, uh, Steve. But uh, uh, 1974 is pretty well booked out. Uh, but in 1975, the whole show will go on the road all around the country. To the major cities and that? Yes, yes, yes. With all this nostalgia, do you ever feel, get, get to the stage where you feel like a rock relics? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm the granddaddy of rock and roll. She's the, She's the grand lady of yeah, rock and roll. Yeah, sometimes called the grandmother of rock and roll too. Well, Diana, can you remember how you got that original Diana Lee look? How did you come by it? Well, uh, Auckland, New Zealand, I'd shifted up from Christchurch, you see, and I had the, the original home perm, you know, with, with the curly hair set and all that and the tight skirts, you know. And um, a girl by the name of Jackie Holm, who used to be girlfriend to Billy Thorpe and Max Merritt, and um, she was a model in those days and uh, she ran a, a shop in Auckland and I walked in. And she said, come here, kid, you know, and sort of sat me down, I'm going to give you a new look, and out with the, these dirty big scissors, you know, that they cut the material with, and off she cut it, and completely changed my makeup, and even I even borrowed her clothes, that's how I started off, never looked back. Well, how, do you, how does rock adapt to the club circuit, because that's what you do now, isn't it? Well, I've always been a rock singer, you know, I'm a, I'm a rock singer, and I've always done rock. And uh, it's only, like in the last, what, two or three years, it's really come into force in the clubs. And uh, the oldies and the youngies, they dig it. If they want it, I'll do it. What would you like most in the world to happen to you? I don't know, because I've been through it, you know, like I, I sort of going overseas and you, you've got big things, and you're thinking, oh, maybe I'll make it this time. You know, big ambitions and, and dreams. but. When you, do, when you sort of go over there and you find that it's not like that, you've got to work, it's all, you come down to earth. So you don't, I don't really plan like I used to and dream. I just take what's happening now and what's sort of happening in the, well, the near future. I look at it that way. I don't look at what, what's going to happen to me in another five or six years, you know. I'm hoping I'm still rocking on. I just, that's all I want to do. Just at the moment, just rock on and do it. You'd be doing. happy to be singing uh, Yokomo when you're 40, would you? I'd love it. I think we'd <laughs> do that, yeah. <laughs>